Hello everyone, it's me Connor and today I am at the Sound Mirrors in Hythe. Um, I would go over there but there's a bridge blocking our, our way and it's only a stone's throw so... On Romney Marsh sit three large concrete structures that aided in the defence of Britain in its darkest hours. These are called acoustic mirrors. But before we get carried away, I suppose the main thing is, is how do we actually get there? Well buckle up because the room's about to start spinning. You happy? I'm happy. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, acoustic mirrors. Action! It's, it's You're pissed, you. The three large concrete structures you can see behind me are known as acoustic mirrors. They were built around 1930 for the sole purpose of listening for enemy aircraft approaching Britain's south coast. In 1930, a new secret defence system was being built by the British government on the south coast of England. It required two race car drivers personal toy and a lot of concrete. Because of the location of where these sound barriers are, it would have been very difficult for them to transport by road the amount of material needed to build such a structure. So, in 1927, the government commandeered a small railway to build a small branch line to build these massive creations of God. The nearby Romney Hive and Dimchurch Railway was built by two race car drivers, Captain John Edwards Presgrave Howie and Count Louis Zabrowski, opening in 1927. Zabrowski would never see this day, dying three years prior in an accident in 1924. A passion project really. To cut a long story short, near Romney Sands, a branch line was constructed, shooting off from the Romney Hive and Dimchurch Railway to aid with the transport of materials to the site where the acoustic mirrors now stand. The array you see behind me could detect and pinpoint where the enemy aircraft would be coming from. They were absolutely essential with early detection before they got outdated, even before they were built. You see, when they were built in the 30s, radar systems have started to develop further so when they were finished they were really pretty much outdated although they did see some use in the second world war and they were used to listen for and detect enemy aircraft the enemy in question nazi germany between september of 1940 and may of 1941 britain was under attack bombarded by the luftwaffe air raids would target railways factories and precious historical sites and of course, densely populated civilian areas. In order to minimize casualties, detecting the enemy well before it arrived at the intended target was a necessity. An operator would sit beneath the acoustic mirror and listen for the low droning of the aircraft's engine. Upon detecting a signal, the message would be passed to higher command and acted upon further. This would give people an early warning. Whilst radar technology had advanced beyond the acoustic mirrors, they were not put to waste. The towers are based in Dungeness, so why was Dungeness chosen? Well, because of its location on the British coast and because of how far it away was from France, it'd be an ideal location to set them as the British government knew that if anyone was going to try and cross the channel, they'd do it there. Acoustic mirrors are dotted all along England's south coast, with radar's invention that became obsolete in 1932, before they'd even been fully constructed, and yet despite this they served their purpose, serving as an early warning system for oncoming air raids during the Second World War, and slowly falling into history thereafter. Today the acoustic mirrors at RAF Dengji stand proud, no longer in use, 
situated on the man-made island within the Royal Society for the Protection of Birds Nature Reserve, restored at a cost of £500,000 in 2003. If you're ever in the area, why not come and take a look for yourself? These monoliths are now little more than a monument to their role in defending Britain when she needed it most. Thank you for watching. I hope you have enjoyed watching this video as I have making it. It is truly a pleasure to have so many of you willing to spend your time to watch our videos and hopefully it's only onwards and upwards so I appreciate every single one of you. Like and subscribe, share with a friend, either passively or forcibly, or superglue their face to a screen, so they can view every single second of what Decades has to offer. That'll be all, see you in the next one.